Hi, and welcome to this video on how to do storytelling in content marketing. Hi, my name is Kelly O'Brien and I'm an online marketing and social media coach and I help you move your most aligned clients from discovering who you are online through to investing with you using storytelling, strategy and systems. Now, I started blogging back in 2009 as a mum blogger. I was on maternity leave from uh, journalism with my second child and I just needed that um, ability to keep writing. And I got to a space where that blog uh, became quite successful and was doing really well and attracted the attention of lots of brands. So the brands were coming to me and asking me to uh, write stories about their product um, in exchange for money, sometimes it was um, the product for free, for example. Now, in the early days, I was um, breastfeeding, and so there was a breastfeeding pump that a company wanted me to promote. And I remember writing this blog post around, um, you know, all the, the humorous stuff that happens as we're trying to... Uh, do all the, the breastfeeding side of things. And I think I may have even used the, um, the term uh, weapons of mass lactation in that blog post. But it, it generated a lot of interest uh, for that company that were really happy with the exposure that it got and the interest that it had in their company. So of course, storytelling can work on all different levels and we can use um, all manner of, of techniques when it comes to storytelling. And if you look online, you'll notice when you try and um, search for things around storytelling in business or marketing, that's pretty overwhelming. And some of it is really technical and can actually put you off wanting to use storytelling because it just gets down into too much of um, writing tactics and storytelling tactics. Uh, so what I want to focus more on is one of the big keys when it comes to storytelling. And I think the one thing uh, on whether a story um, is a success or not is actually the emotion in it. And I was able to make people laugh through that, um, through, through that product review uh, without, you know, without actually having to go into all the technicalities of who was the character and what was the plot and all those sorts of things. Now, they're really, it's really important to understand who the character is, what is the conflict, because we need to have conflict in a story, and I will expand on that in the blog post that's connected to this video. But um, the thing that I most want to talk about is when we're blogging and when we're content marketing, when we're creating those posts, there are a few things that we need to be looking at, and the key one is the emotion. But here are just a few tips to help get you uh, through starting uh, so that you're not held back by some of the overwhelm that you might currently have around trying to write um, stories within your blog posts. Now the first one is to hook them from the beginning. Now if you've ever read a book where they've set up the scene and they're setting up the characters and explaining the characters and you get to a point where you think, you know what, I think I might put this book down, it's taking too long to get to the action and um, we just get to that point where um, it's make or break for us. If the action doesn't start soon, we're getting really bored and we're starting to read the same sentence two or three times to try and get it to actually sink into our brain. So when we are looking at blog posts, we don't want to do too much of that setup stuff. We want to dive straight into the action and we want to hook them from the beginning because that's our first key when it comes to writing. The next part about writing is not so much just that hook, but then how do we keep them hooked until the end and that's um, another blog and another video for another day. But right now we want to be able to capture their attention from the beginning. So what can we do? We can start with a quote. Sometimes that can really throw you into, um, you know, throw you into the story straight away. We can start with um, some conflict. So in a conflict scenario or a situation that we're putting someone in, right, delve them right into the problem from the beginning so that they, um, they're intrigued to know how this is going to um, unfold and what the outcome is going to be. We can use a bold claim or a statement. Maybe you've got some statistics there that you can put out there that makes someone go, oh wow, okay, I wanna learn more. So think about how you can hook them early. Find that thing that from the very first, first sentence, they're ready to learn more. 
So next we need to humanize our story. And that's really about finding the character or the protagonist when you've read a lot of those technical um, storytelling um, posts and, and books out there. They'll talk about the protagonist and that's really coming up with who is the main character. Now in marketing terms, it's often our reader. The person reading it is who we're actually writing about. We're putting them in the situation so they can experience it firsthand. And that's a really big key part of our storytelling is someone feeling like they're experiencing something in the moment as opposed to reading from um, from an external point of view or looking in um, the other way that we can do it is if we're doing a case study for example we might actually tell it from our our um, clients point of view as a, as a case study form and then the other one is actually our own experiences so you're writing about you um, and uh, what you've lived through and, and what you've done so it's from that perspective um, so obviously there's a few different angles that you can take and you need it to determine what is going to be the most effective approach for you to write this story the next one is conflict. Now we need to have conflict in our story, otherwise we don't really have a story. It's not, it's pretty bland and boring if somebody uh, has a problem and it's just solved instantly. Most people will go through a bit of a challenge or have some real concerns around how they're going to be able to overcome the problem that they have. So you need to think about in the, the blog post that you're writing, what is the challenge? What is the conflict? What is the thing that holds someone back from being able to achieve something? And me telling you about storytelling, the big problem here is that there's so much technical stuff. How do we get this to a point where we can make it um, achievable and actually actionable, that we can go out there and start writing stories? So think about when you're writing your post, you've got this great hook and you've hooked them in. Now, what is the thing? What are the challenges that are going to happen and the conflict that the writer or the person reading, sorry, is um, is, is having and that you're going to be able to overcome um, through this so that we can have an outcome? Now, I already touched on this one at the beginning, but emotion is so important in storytelling. As I said, you can not have a plot. You can be a bit, you know, um, your character might not be well-defined, but if you don't have emotion, then this is really where stories fall down. If you've ever watched um, a movie, for example, and, you know, technically it is perfect storytelling, except for the fact that it's devoid of emotion, that's where you got into a movie and you said, mm, it was okay, but there's just something missing. The missing part is the fact you didn't feel something. So that's what we want to be able to do when we write pieces of content. We want to make people feel, and I'm not talking about them, you know, breaking down into tears and, and um, it, you know, our reader being completely overwhelmed um, with, with, emotion that's not really what we're after we're just after them feeling something so that could be um the fear around investing in something in you know something that's you know a, a big project for example it might be the nostalgia of, of something that happened um that now they look back on and and it's related to what they're doing now or it might be the pride in actually achieving something but what do you want to make someone feel as they're writing this and often that can help trigger um, some specific stories that you can tell within a blog post um, that highlight certain certain aspects of, of the key point or the message that you're trying to get across the other part that I don't talk about a lot when it comes to storytelling is actually the visuals. So I spend quite a bit of time thinking about the visual that I want for a blog post when I write it, and even for social media posts as well. What is the feeling that you want to elicit via this image, this visual? And it doesn't have to be an image either. It can be an infographic or it might be a video as well. So it's always me generally in my office uh, or sometimes in, my, in the front lounge room as well, different um, places that I might have. But um, sometimes we can take things to different scenarios or situations to be able to elicit um, a, a specific feeling as well through our visuals. So have a think about the feeling. My uh, eight-year-old daughter at the moment is going through a phase where she um, doesn't want to read chapter books unless they've got visuals in them because she wants the book to do the hard work for her. Um, so think about how you want to illustrate um, your blog post and what's the feeling that you want to put into that.
And the last point is just thinking about some of the stories that you have that can uh, help with the goal or the outcome of this particular blog post. What is the goal? And I do have another blog post that talks about uh, determining what your goal is um, and the framework for a blog post. But when it comes to the story, what story is most going to help you move the person to the actual outcome that you want. So thinking about the emotion um, and the outcome as well uh, and the character and the point of view that you're taking, what story um, helps bring all of those things together for you? And it may be um, a story that's about overcoming some objections that your um, ideal client has that you might be able to tell a story of your own situation where you've overcome um, something in your own life that um, helps highlight that. It may be that you're telling a, a client case study type story to add some proof, some social proof because that's what you need to um, most do. Um, or maybe it's, um, you know, telling a why story that people need to understand, um, you know, and trust you and understand your bigger purpose and your bigger vision on what you're doing and why you're doing it. So you can find stories that are related to that. Stories can come from the past. They can be something that happened yesterday down the, you know, um, while you were out shopping. Um, or they can be vision stories, stories that haven't happened quite yet, but um, they're, they're what you want to see happen in five or ten years' time as well. So I have um, a storytelling guide that goes into more about finding the specific stories. But as far as writing your content, you need to think um, really as a holistic um from a holistic point of view, what is the big goal that you want to have? What is the point of view that you want to tell that story from? And um, of course, what is the emotion? What is the thing that is going to um, allow people to move through this piece of content and feel something at the end and want to take action? So thank you so much for, um, for listening and for watching the video. There'll be more tips in the blog post that expand even further on how you can be using storytelling in your content marketing. Thanks so much for listening.